All right, guys, we're back. Thank you so much. Technical difficulties. Thank you to my team out in Manchester, UK, my team in New York City. We've got Vernon Cathy with us today. Uh, I had the opportunity to meet him to experience what Power Slap is all about most recently. The first airing, the match was on March 8th. The second Power Slap 2 just was on ESPN, ESPN Plus Live uh, in May. I'm collecting my thoughts here because there's so much that we can have as a conversation. I'm not going to lie. This is very different. Uh, you know, Vernon, <laughs> yeah. I'm usually with, you know, talking to producers and actors and, and fighters, but this is different and this is brand new to me. And, and most importantly, as people know, is when I come to see these fights, when I come to see these matches, I look for the story. All right. I know that there's going to be other journalists out there and they're going to be writing about, other components about the sport, about your sport. I, my interest is in you. It's in the sport. I want to cover certain things. I have some questions for you, but at the same time, without you, we wouldn't have power slap. We wouldn't have, you know, uh, boxing and MMA and football and all of that. Uh, Mm -hmm. With that being said, one of the things that you did share with us that I do want to touch upon and ask is yes, there has, uh, there's a designation as to someone is going first. This is where it's a little bit uh, mind boggling to me because we all know that people get to take turns. People have some short, sort of shot to mm-hmm. at this. So let's say you're up there and you're with someone and you take your first slap and that person goes down. And what I learned is it's a count of eight. And if the person, what is not up in eight seconds, they're disqualified, correct? Yeah, it's it's eight to ten. It's it's all on it's all on the judge um, and the ref because you know they're trying to keep this as safe as possible, but yet be entertaining. Um, you know, I had a fight where I lost and I was called out, and I felt I I could went further, but also we have to rely on a third party, you know, because if it was up to me, I would go up there and just keep going and going, and you know, it's it's how it's going to be. So, you know, we have to shout out to our refs and the Nevada, you know, commission and making this as safe as possible while being entertaining. So, yeah, you go, it goes up to 10 seconds. And then after that, they deem if you're necessary to continue, you go up and, you know, get ready and then you slap the other guy. So it'll go back and forth. But yeah, at the, at the utmost, we need to realize that if anything is called, it's, it's for safety. All right, so for those that are tuning in, uh, I know we've got Jim, we've got Jason, uh, we've got Connie, we've got Alex, we've got a bunch of people that have got some questions lined up, and I'll do my best to get to those, you know, providing the time that we have right now. If you're listening to us, whether it be on the iOS or Android app or on power985.com, you can always click the bottom right-hand icon in Messenger in the right-hand corner. Send us your love. Send a question. If you got a question for Vernon or myself, don't hesitate to do that. All right, so now here we are. I'm watching the live. We're there. And, and let's play the scene out like right now as if it's happening. And you're, you're stepping on stage. You're there across from your opponent. And you're going first. And actually, let me let me flip the script on that. Your opponent is going first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then they do a condition of where they are uh, measuring. I, I learned that measure, one, two, and then the third is a slap. What mm-hmm. happens? Here, here's where I want to know how it's how can this be fair? And maybe some other people would like to know this. If you were to get slapped and then... You feel that you're good, but you're having a hard time getting up. And then within that 10 seconds, the ref counts you out. Mm -hmm. How is it that you can, what I want to know is how is that you can eventually get a fair shot again? Because it's, it's not like any other sport to where you take turns. If the person who goes first makes that impactful slap and and I don't know if it's the right term knocks out or, or, or yeah, I mean, you can knock them out or, or stunt. You can stun yeah. them enough where they're, they're immobile. Yeah. Yep. 
So you prepare for that entire moment. And mm -hmm. if you get taken out with one slap, then you've got to wait all over again until there's another competition. Yep. Yes. That's what and blows my mind. <laughs> it's, it's a, uh, you know, for me, it's a little more mental. Um, you know, I did professional fighting and I, you know, the Highland games and, but at this one, you know, I've, I've won two where I've knocked two guys out and I've lost two were the one, it was a questionable call. You know, I got back up and it was called early. The second one that happened recently, I also lost and I took the first hit. Uh, everything went fine. You know, then I mentally prepared myself to hit him. I hit him. He took it. And then he went back to me. And that's where, um, that's where the safety comes in is I, I, I took a really hard hit. I went down, you know, I got up, did the walk, everything. And then the doctors called it. So, yeah, I mean, it's, to be honest with you on my side, it's more mental, just preparing for, for, uh, you know, just getting hit, you know, cause when, like you said, like, how do you prepare yourself? Like, so when I know I'm getting hit, you know, you breathe, you look, you tense, you know, you do everything you can because you know, it's coming and, and it's, it's fair when people are like, Oh, it's not fair because you went first or second. The fair aspect is they have to call which hand they're using and which, which, uh, swing they're going on. So if they said two, I know it's coming at two. If they said three, it's coming at three. So I can tense up and prepare for the hit. When we think about you tensing up and preparing for the hit, what does that mean? What have you done to condition to condition your upper body? Is it your neck? Are you doing facial exercises? You just, no one can off the street. And that's one of the questions. I do not believe that you can, and thank you for that, Jason, anyone from any background, he's saying that he's got a background in MMA and mm -hmm. kickboxing, Jason from uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. I don't believe you can just go into this because you have a sports background to say and be like, I'm going to go and take these kind of hits. Can you explain more on what qualifies a person to get involved? What type of conditioning, what type of medical do you have to pass? And do you need to condition your shoulders, your chest, your neck, your face? What do you have to do? Yeah. I mean, honestly, you know, I mean, the biggest thing is, uh, you know, it's, it's literally from the floor up. Um, you know, my biggest fear honestly was, uh, you know, hurting my hand from going across their face and extending my fingers. So, you know, the Highland games helped me with that because I did, I did a stone throw, which is like a shot put. So your arm always gets flexed. So for someone to just come off the street and, and do it, I'm not saying it's not possible, but you're likely of injury is going to be, is going to be high. Now, and that's just on, on giving a hit, you know, slapping someone now on receiving a hit. Now, if you watch the reality show, you know, there's multiple people cause you can't flinch, you know, that's truly, honestly, that is the hardest part of the sport is not flinching. And that just, that takes mental preparation. You know, we did things, honestly, it's going to sound crazy, but you know, we worked with pool noodles because you can't just start slamming people in the head, you know, to make them not flinch. And even with that, you know, some people tense up and move. So there's, there's always going to be in every sport, there's a certain percentage that mental has to take over. And in ours, it's the mental ability to literally sit there, look at your opponent and not move. All right. Kathy from Oregon. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, Kathy. She says, how the hell can you not flinch after a slap? She's like, I'm Googling it right now and watching some of the videos. She, oh, yeah, that, she says, there's yeah. no way in hell I could not flinch. You know, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's the other part of the sport. You know, that's, you know, why Dana and Frank and Hunter, why they contacted me, you know, and, and this progression of the sport is because they knew I'd be an athlete that was going to follow the rules. And the big, one of the biggest thing is not flinching. Cause if you go up there and you're watching a match and the guy loses, you know, the other guy, the opponent wins because he's sitting there flinching, you know, that's, that's, that's not entertaining. You know, my loss is still entertaining for people. Yeah. And, and to tell like, and that's, that's the difference. You know, she says, there's no way she can do it. I mentally prepare myself knowing 
every outcome that can happen. And I'm okay with every outcome that can happen. And that's the hardest thing for people to understand. You know, my parents, even my friends, you know, there's lots of people, you know, like a bug flies at them and they flinch. You know, I'm weird. We are just different people that, that do this. Like I don't flinch because, you know, I'm, I'm prepared and doesn't bother me. So that's, that's the mental aspect and the preparation that takes it to this sport. We're, and you just enlightened me and uh, I'm seeing it in my head. I, I'm, I'm processing what you're telling me because I'm going back to the video up on a screen. So anyone, if you've ever mm-hmm. been in a UFC apex, there's four screens around the room. And now I completely understand to where the face looks like a sourpuss <laughs> or almost like someone ate a lemon um, or poked you in a butt or gave you a wedgie, but you're not yep. showing the sweet spot of the ooh from yep. it. Mm-hmm. Okay. I can't, I did not know you weren't allowed to flinch. It, it, I, I'm seeing all of your faces now in my head going through as to now I understand why. Yep. You look the way yep. that you looked. Wow. That is, that is, let me tell you, anybody that, and I'm I'm putting it here because I haven't heard too much on it, and I I don't want usually want to hear what other people's opinions are until I can get mine first, give or take Vernon uh, the situation. Uh, with this though, if anyone were to criticize you or the sport, or to even say it's not a sport, there's no way in. Ha- I mean, going back to what Jason and you know had shared and and what you know Kathy had stated, uh conditioning I, I i don't even know if that's even the right word of what you have to go through because there doesn't seem to be any flexibility you can't flinch that is a natural human response yeah. yep and and that's that's honestly to me that's the hardest part and then if you ever read my comments or anything i say even after a loss I always, you know, congratulate my opponents and I'm all like, you know, they stood there, they took it, I stood there and took it. And that's, to me, that's the hardest part of the sport is, is the not flinching and giving, giving them the show that everyone was there for. That's intense. That is, I'm going to see now when I go to power slap three, I'm going to view your profession even more enlightened and respecting it even more. Not that I lacked it before. It, you just, I, I encourage anyone before anyone attends or to want to get involved, just do your research or even to speak to someone like you, Vernon, because it gives a whole different detailed perspective that is really needed for this. I believe everyone needs to know these details or should know them to appreciate before thinking, oh, well, he came from, you know, the Highland games or he came from MM. No, like this is something that um, is, I would say primarily mental and secondarily physical, right? In my, in my experience. Yeah. I mean, that's like uh, AJ, you know, I, I've lost to him and um, you know, he, he honestly, he's one of the few people that I'd, I'd say he's not an athlete, but you know, there's different ways of conditioning. He is a very big, like he goes to concerts, he goes to metal concerts, he head bangs, he, you know, does a lot of stuff that way. And his neck and his ability to, to take a hit is probably the best in the league just because of, you know, what he does. And, and, you know, he always claims like, well, you know, I, he doesn't do anything, you know, workout wise, but his workout is his concerts and his head banging and stuff like that. And, Mine is just different. I, I, I work out physically as a workout. Now, when you guys are up there, you're holding on to something behind your back. Can you tell mm-hmm. us what that is? Because it reminds me of a spaghetti noodle, or I'm assuming it, it is. It, it, it's, it's pretty close to okay. like a pool noodle. Okay. noodle. It's a little harder. <laughs> it's, just some, it's just something so that you know we don't move our hands. It's another aspect of keeping us still. So we, you know, try not to raise our shoulders so we don't, the person doesn't hit their hand into our shoulders if we flex. And that's another thing. A lot of people don't realize like, oh, people are like, well, I just dip my head and tuck my shoulders. Well, I can't, I can't do that. I need to expose my chin, have my chest level. And even the table, like I'm, I'm supposed to lean up against the table. I'm supposed to touch the table. 
So there's multiple aspects in this that that I have no control of. Is you know I have no control of my feet has to be in the box. I can't raise my shoulders. I have to touch the podium, and I have to look forward and not flinch. And the other thing I I found very interesting because I uh, leaned over to Amado and I said clubbing. He's like, yeah, you're not allowed to club. It is so technical. Seriously, <laughs> this isn't to where, oh, he's going to go. No, no, no. The, the detail to the attention uh, mm-hmm. or attention to detail, clubbing, how do you avoid it? Uh, why it, does it happen? It's right now it's fairly controversial because, you know, it's new and the refs are new and everything's new and, and we're involving the sport. There's There's going to be mistakes. There's going to be wins and losses that people are going to disagree with and it's it's mainly going to be over clubbing and and stepping with their feet clubbing is where you either your hand doesn't strike the face completely so you lead with the palm or you know you kind of you kind of whip your hand and and it's position of how far up your palm can go up the face and you know i I feel in a couple of instances in this last competition, someone won and it was a club, but we have to understand we're making this sport better and it's going to take time for, for to get the athletes to, to dial back, to get everything going. So yeah, there's clubbing and there's the stepping is the easiest one to, to figure out. You can't, you can't lift your heel and pivot your foot at the same time. So you can't make a right hook on someone. You're trying to be as parallel as possible while you're giving the slap. Okay. What's next for you? You know, for me, honestly, uh, I got a few more fights left on my contract. Um, I'm doing the best I can to, you know, promote the sport as good as I can. Um, I'd like to be either, I'd like to do multiple events still, or even be on the backside of this and, you know, be in a corner, coach someone or, you know, announce or anything that involves a, involves with the sport and growing it and uh you know i just my social media following is going up and i'm just trying to do my best to buy them by giving entertainment and you know good content for them uh anyone and everyone that's listening we've got vernon kathy you can head on over to his instagram at v-e-r-c-u-l-e-s 200 uh he's an athlete loving father of three beautiful kids Mm mm-hmm what do you have? Uh, two boys, one girl, two girls, one boy. Yeah, two boy, two boys, one girl. Oh, okay. And uh, I have a stepson and a fiance, so you know that's that. You know, I've so four and four kids, and you know I'm a mechanic, and I just you know try to go to all their sports, and you know I'm just we're just in the Midwest, and we try to you know just be real family oriented. So, how do you find the balance? That is the hardest thing, you know, I was, go- I was gone for a month for a reality TV show. And then when I go to fight, um, I'm usually gone for a week. So it's not that bad. You know what I mean? I mean, there's actors and stuff that deal with more stuff than I deal with. So it's, it's, it's good. Um, yeah. Now I was going to say, uh, I'm on your page right now. And, uh, I, what I like is it's, it's, it's you. It's nothing else but just you. And that's what I really respect. And a a lot of people don't know is two of my uncles from my biological side of the family were street fighters. They loved to street fight old school, East Coast style. Uh, It wasn't (laughs) something that was on a books or you put in the news. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, Jersey, you know, that's, um, you know, uh, for myself, I felt that it was important to be conditioned and have a, a good feeling of being able to know how to protect yourself in case there's a, an issue, issue. So I never yeah. took MMA, but I did take boxing classes. And I really respect the fact that what I appreciate about you is you remind me very much of home and you remind me a lot of the background that I come from of, of my family and and what it means to, you know, uh, you've got people in the industry that will bet and they're, you know, they'll put money on a table and, 
you know, I like to come in from a different angle and, and, and not a, a business, you know, it's important that the business is there because that's how you make money and get your good contracts. I'm here mm-hmm. for you to where, you know, it's not so much to where everyone has to have a story, yet the fact of it is, is everyone does in some way, shape or form that are in sports. Yeah. And I mean, the, like you said, when you, when you see me, um, you know, that's me, like, uh, if you go on my page, there's a, the other day I just got in from a loss and I took the kids to Dave and Buster's and this little kid came up to me and he's like, Oh, are you Vern the mechanic? And I'm like, yeah, I'm Vern the mechanic. He's like, Oh, we watch you fight. You know, he's like, I'm you know, sorry about your loss. We love you. And honestly, out of everything that happened, you know, that moment there made me love what I'm doing. I mean, the kid, the kid saw me lose. Mm-hmm. He still wanted to talk to me. And instantly I was like, well, I got some, I had my Jersey and my shirts and everything. Cause I literally got off the airplane and, you know, we, I went to do stuff with the kids. So I gave them jerseys and, you know, hoodies and anything I had, you know, cause I don't, you know, I don't need it. You know, if it makes someone else happy, you know, I'm fine with that. So that, at that point, that was probably the best thing that I, I could have felt in like this whole, my whole career with this is just knowing that I'm a good enough person that even if I lost people were, were still happy to see me. So that was, that was probably a great, that was the greatest moment so far in me being in power slab. And that's the most rewarding. Cause I'm feeling that through you. And I remember that video, uh, of you, and that was what, six days ago, wasn't it? That you yeah. Shared? Yep. Yeah. I want to play mm-hmm. something here. Hold on, Vern. Yeah. big loss like that to see that people still care i'm gonna do it again what's up everybody um i just wanted to thank that family that came up and talked to me it was amazing uh it was great after a big loss like that to see that people still care and yeah i mean i'm here to entertain and people are entertained i'm gonna keep doing it so i want to thank uh, dana frank hunter and the power slap uh, organization on keeping me going and i'm gonna do all i can for the fans so there's more to come Thank you, everybody. I don't know if you heard that or not. I played it through my phone of you thanking everyone and you're your, in your vehicle and Dana and the power mm-hmm. slap. I, I What I feel from you is you, you're you very humble, uh, and I mean this in a way to where you're not here for hype. You're not here for clout. You're just Vernon, and it's it, yeah, it's remarkable. Yeah, yeah it's, it's – I uh, mean – and, and there's nothing wrong with other guys that are showmen and, you know, they're, they're putting, cause you know, there's, there's, there's different people for everybody. And for me, you know, I'm, I'm just me, um, you know, win or lose, I'm me. And it's, like I said, it's just been great to, you know, to be, to be humble. You know, I'm older now than I, you know, when I was younger, I, when I was younger, I was a different guy. I probably would have not made it on the show. I would have, been a total jerk and thought that I deserved everything. And now that I've gotten older and I understand, you know, what people put up for you, I mean, Dana, Frank and Hunter, I mean, they invested in me. So I have to, I have to do good by them and, you know, be a great person. And I, and I'm trying to have my best to do that. So that's, that's, and for that little kid to come up and talk to me, that just was the icing on the cake. It was amazing. Do you ever get to, too ahead of yourself or within your head wondering what type of a legacy you're leaving to yourself or what you're doing or what it may be like once a match is over do you does it ever concern you as to what to what you're doing for your kids as to not wanting to make a mistake. That's basically where my question is going. Do you ever are concerned about that to, to where you do your best not to get in your own way, to be the best example on and off the stage? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think about it a lot. Um, I got a little emotional at this last loss and, you know, I, you know, I ended up ripping my shirt off and throwing in the crowd. I was kind of upset. But, you know, there's also a side to it. You know, I'm still a competitor and I'm, I'm trying, I'm always there to win, but, you know, just afterwards, if, if I can show kids and, you know, people that, 
you know, we're here for them and the entertainment's for them. And, you know, it's, it's great. My kids, you know, people talk to them about it. They send them links. I mean, my best thing is if I can do a good enough job and be a good enough person that I don't ashamed my family, that that's all that matters. And, and Dana and all them, and as long as I can be a good person and not, you know, you know, show bad face uh, for everyone. If I may ask you and only share if you're comfortable to answer, we know that there are people that go into sports because they feel that they have to do it in order to provide for their families or they're a new, they're becoming a new parent or something, or that they want to do it or both. Why power slap? Why, why sports? Why not just remain a mechanic and, and to do what you need to do and not put that added stress on yourself? Well, it's, it's a little bit of both. Um, you know, I was, uh, I was a very highly high ranked, uh, state athlete in track. I've always been a competitor and there was, you know, there's prior to this, there was a good five, six years gap that I didn't compete and I just don't feel like myself. I mean, even if it's, I mean, it's anything. And then when I was given this opportunity, when they called me, you know, I was like, well, if, if they're calling me and they think I can do it, then I better do it. And it's at the point where yeah, I'm still, I'm providing for my family and I'm also competing at the point that I can't provide for my family. I can't do this anymore. Mm. So fam, family still first, but I will compete as long as I am able to provide for my family. And if that did not make any more sense, it means you're not going to sell. What I hear is you're not going to sell yourself out. You're going to always do the right thing. And most importantly, even when you put your family and your children first, you're also putting yourself first. That's what I heard. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, is, it all has to make sense. It, it all has to, it all has to add up. And at the point where if I'm becoming selfish and it's taking away from my family and providing for them, I can't do it. Is there anything that you would like to share with our listeners that we may not have covered or something about power slap, anything at all to just bring more clarity uh, before overindulging by making assumptions or wondering what the media or someone else is saying, why power slap, whether they are going to be a fan or a spectator or possibly an athlete, what do you recommend? You know, I, I, I recommend being yourself. Um, you know, it's just like on the reality TV show. If, if they would have had a whole house full of me, it would have never went. Um, they're going to look for all walks of life and, and this kind of sport and you being genuine, no matter who it is, is going to be the best outcome for yourself. And on that aspect, I mean, I chose power slap because, you know, in, in my town, everyone knows, like, you know, you don't mess with Vern. You don't mess. And it's my whole life's been that way. So I felt like a pride to continue that for, for my, you know, town. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it, it's, it's a great, it's a great sport. It's a great company. Um, you know, I'll go back to what Dana says. If you don't like it, don't watch, you know, but if you enjoy it, you know, contact, you know, do the best you can, you know, watch it, support it and let's make it grow. Moving forward, and I want to thank everyone for joining Vern, Kathy, as well as myself today on Live on Air with Stephen Cuoco. Vern is co-hosting. He's not just a guest. He's co-hosting because this is a topic that I wanted you to be side by side with me today, Vern, on because, you know, you're educating me. This is something to where I'm I'm not a, a, a fan. I'm uh, not or not just a fan or something. I would say I'm more than that. Like I, I want to be, you know, family and um, an ally. That's what it is. I'm an ally for you from a media perspective, from a publicist perspective, um, but also as someone that respects the sport. Uh, for myself, I don't want to call it a fan because I feel it diminishes it because I see and feel so much more in this to where I'm not just sitting there, you know, bouncing around with or, or like not – you know, jumping up with mm-hmm. popcorn in my hand and stuff. I'm there wanting to know every detail possible so that I can appreciate what this sport means. No different than anyone understanding the the science with 
football and baseball and hockey and, and, and boxing and everything else. There's a science to power slap. This isn't to where you just say, oh, one day I'm going to go and take a hit. If you want to do a, a, a backyard <laughs> or or uh, underground street fighting or, or something, you want to try that, fine. But with this, uh, you have to be extremely conditioned. You have to understand and respect what you're getting yourself into, but also respect and understand that when you are there across from someone else, that is your opponent. Um, it is their life, their reputation as well. And even though you're, you're there to win it individually, you're still there as a team from beginning to end. 100%. 100%. We're not going to grow this sport without without a team effort. So, yeah. Any closing thoughts? You know, I just uh, I just want everyone to know, I mean, if if anyone has any questions or anything like that, you know, you can DM me. I do my best I can to respond to people and and, you know, just seeing people out in public. I you anyone can come out and talk to me. It doesn't bother me. And I just I've enjoyed, you know, talking with you, Steve, and everything that's going on. And my goal is just grow the sport, you know, and we have all sorts of, you know, I say characters, you know, cause Ryan Phillips, I mean, he is a great guy. He should announce he's awesome. AJ shows a part of America where, you know, a guy from where he's from can get to the top. So it's, it's just like any other sport and we just need to make it grow. And it will. Do you know if there, I haven't heard word yet. Is there going to be another power slap or not, not another, but a power slap three, Within a couple months, um, and I'm assuming it's gonna be probably probably three to four months. And the only reason why that is is because uh, when when we get hit and stuff, there's safety again. So like I have a I have a 45 day suspension, and uh, I can't compete for 45 days. And there's other people that are also in that same boat. So by keeping it safe, it's gonna be more like three to four months out. All right. So question here because I heard suspension is that a positive thing yeah yeah okay, no, that's, that's a po- okay. that's a positive thing and, it, and i'm just suspended because of of uh the ref stoppage and due to my due to getting striked the way i did okay. so yeah yeah no 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 nothing bad i mean we need like i said we got to keep it safe so it's it's under the nevada you know state commission what they deal that ne- deem necessary for the period of time we have to wait after we compete so and it's the same way it's the same way with boxing or mma or anything like you know if when you get done there every one of us in any contact sport like that they sit down with the doctor they talk to you and then they issue you your suspension so it's not like we're the only people getting suspended Okay, so it's once again, it's out to make it very clear also, you know, from a journalist perspective that the word is not uh, a negative condensation. Uh, what is it? Nope. A tone or whatever you want to call it. It nope. is something yep. for uh, a buffer for your safety. Yep. Yep. It's a medical medical suspension. Yep. It's a buffer for safety. That's good. That's a good term. Put it. Yeah. It's a buffer for our safety. Yep. I do have to ask when in your last match where I had attended. What is mm-hmm. the doctor looking for to determine whether you can continue or not? You know, it's just our stability. Um, if we're coherent, you know, things like that. And, uh, you know, and, and at the end, you know, I may think I'm fine. They, they, you know, they, they see MMA, they, the same guys that we have are the same guys that are in UFC, you know, the same ref, same everything. So they've been around the block on, you know, making sure fighter safeties on on the top so okay no thank you for that clarity thank you to everyone joining Vern, kathy as well as myself today on live on air with steven cuoco on power 98.5 satellite radio Vern here co-hosting with me teaching us all great things about power slap uh what it means to be an athlete in power slap why it is a very serious and professional sport it's not something that you can just walk off the street and just do um and then also all great things Vern kathy head on over to his instagram at v-e-r-c-u-l-e-s 200 and definitely i hope uh there is a strong consideration to have you host, co-host, or be a commentator or uh, someone that's introducing. Um, You're made for this. You look exceptional. 
uh, put, you. put a, a, you know, a nice colorful polo on you or whatever it is that they want for, for dress style. And I think you're, you'll be set to go, but let me tell you this anytime and every time that I have the opportunity to attend a power slap event and be able to have the opportunity to do media coverage on it. I definitely, whether you are competing or not, I definitely would like to have you on and for you to share your thoughts, even if it's something about a match that you can just educate the public on. Cause once again, this is new. Uh, this mm -hmm. is something we are all learning across the board. Even, you know, UFC is still sorting things out. Power slap is still sorting things out, but also from a media perspective, I definitely feel, uh, that, you know, being educated when we think about terms and when we think about, um, you know, things are changing up or, you know, whatever it is that's being finite within this sport is just going to help us deliver a clear message. Just like when you had in, initially said uh, suspended, you know, we wouldn't want someone to go and, and put that in in something that worked against you to where it's working yeah. for you. Yep. Um, anything else before we close out? No, I just uh, I just want to thank all the supporters and everyone that listens to your show and, you know, any anything and everything that uh, helps us to move forward and, you know, just uh, be kind and just do our, anything you can to help people out. And congratulations. I've been researching you before we went live and people are really grasping to have you on their show. It's like you're not doing, you know, you're not a one hit wonder here. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, and I just I want I want to make it grow and like tomorrow I'm doing a uh, a barbecue uh, a barbecue show with a buddy of mine and yeah we're gonna do some barbecue events this summer so yeah we're just I'm just I'm just me and it's just gonna be me traveling and what I do on weekends and stuff like that so you'll see content from working on cars to going to barbecue competitions so it'll be awesome. All right. If you're able to drop this, the barbecue competitions, is this a YouTube thing? Is this a network thing or is this a Instagram thing? It'll be it'll, my friend, Dan, he, Dan Sanders. He's a professional barbecue uh, competitor. And I have another friend, Jason Mann, that owns a uh, barbecue store. So okay. we're just going to be filming our life on how we do that. And you saw I did one cooking show the other day that was on a uh, you know, uh, chef reactions on TikTok. So we're just going to catapult that and keep going with it. Oh, and then you'll get another show out of that. Can you imagine? <laughs> we'll see. You never know. I'm telling you, you're made for TV. You're perfect for TV. You got the look, you got the vibe. And most importantly, because you're a dad, it really, it really is, um, meaningful. I, I, that, that's the word that comes to my mind to, to have someone like you there because you're very comforting. And, and I mean this in all due respect, kind of like a Santa Claus way, not because you have the beard and mustache, but I mean that it's in, a, it's in a way to where I even feel safe. Even in this conversation, I feel very comfortable and safe with you. And that's because of you, Vern. And I just hope you're very proud of yourself and recognize what an extraordinary person and a man that you are. And um, it really exudes. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. It means a lot. You're welcome. Thanks again to everyone who joined Vern, Kathy, as well as myself today on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio live on air with Stephen Cuoco. If you happen to join us later or late in the interview or towards the end, we will be uploading this to your favorite podcast stations, whether it be Amazon Music, Amazon Audible, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. Uh, we will re-air this episode at a later date. Don't hesitate to check out the schedule, whether it be on the app or on the website, power985.com. There will be a new episode of Resilient You with Alicia Pazzoni this Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern. And uh, I'm covering UFC this week, so definitely head on over to the Power 98.5 Instagram page, uh, Facebook, whatever it may be. Um, definitely uh, check out all great things, Vern Cathy, V-E-R-C-U-L-E-S 200. Have a great day, everyone.
Find us on your socials and let's connect.